Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to talk about in strategy what it means to analyze your competition. So the Michael Porter article, The Five Forces That Shape Industry Competition, outlines five various forces that always are against your company at any given point in time. Some forces are bigger than others, so you would rate them high, medium, or low, or strong, or weak, because all of these forces in some industries or in some companies are forcing as much review to do something innovative or strategic. But you constantly have to be aware of these different forces to ensure you're you know, you know, understanding your competition and how to compete in today's marketplace. We'll talk about each one in more detail. First, vertical competition, the bargaining power of suppliers. Suppliers play a critical role in many industries, right? A supplier, by the way, could be as simple as a factory providing raw materials, actually producing your products. They could be a third party supplier of technology if they're providing software for your company. They're any kind of a uh, third party company that you partner with to provide your product or service to your end consumer, right? So the first thing to understand is that the number of important suppliers in your industry, a lot of companies share the same suppliers that they're competing with. Okay. Cause quite frankly, there's only a limited number of suppliers in certain industries to support a company in their industry. So the one that you have is comp competition amongst your own supplier that they're providing a service or you know, pricing of something to that to that company in your industry. So suppliers have that negotiation aspect, right, on the cost, on the pricing. They know that based on the demand for their service or their supply, that they can, you know, either raise costs or negotiate costs that are profitable for them, but can also be cost prohibitive for a business. So it's really important to have good sustainable relationships with your suppliers to make sure you're keeping up with what's going on in their in what they're doing. Um, the bargaining power of suppliers too, as it says in number three, the third bullet point, the differentiation of switching costs for the supplier's products. You know, there's a lot of things too that are out of your control that makes the supplier's costs go up. Think about tariffs. Think about, you know, when it comes to tariffs and the increase of the cost of goods. Well, that's going to increase the cost to you to buy it and then in return sell it to your customers, right? It, it really impacts your profitability. Okay. Supplier's contribution on the quality of the product as well and the service. You know, suppliers, you know, start to lessen the qual their quality standards in their factories or in their software technology. Well, then you're impacted by that as well, right? So it's a driving force that you want to make sure that you're partnering with suppliers or third-party partners that have a strong ability to keep on top of their quality control. Because you want to make sure you provide good quality to your consumers. And then total industry costs contributed by the supplier. A supplier can dictate a lot of costs dynamics in your industry, right? Because it all starts with the supplier, then the business buying that product or service or those raw materials. And then the company has to determine their their financial model to be profitable when they when they provide that service and sell it to an end consumer or whoever their customers are. Remember, a lot of this is also B2B or B2C. Business to consumer or business to business, same thing. Right? The chain of the chain of kind of doing business is at the very back end is a supplier somewhere providing something to a business who then in return sells it to someone else. Well, if it starts with a supplier with some kind of cost differential, it's gonna end up being more costly for others down the road. The bargaining power of buyers. Think of this as you as the consumer, right? We as consumers have a strong impact on any business, right? We dictate pricing in the market, okay? We dictate what we're willing to buy and how much we're willing to buy it for. We're willing to switch brands if we're not loyal to our brand. We're willing to, you know, go to the next competitor if this company isn't providing us the quality or the value or the price we're looking for. Okay. So in this bullet point, list of bullet points of bargaining power buyers at the end of the day, it's all about we as consumers are savvy. We can be loyal to certain brands and that's fine, but some industries are impacted by brand loyalty. It's really hard to take someone as a, a loyal customer of a brand and shift them over to another one. Right, apparel could be that, right? Maybe you're a, a Nike, uh, you're a Nike customer, and you always buy Nike, and then it's gonna be really hard for Under Armour to take that attention away from you as a Nike loyalist to them, or in food especially. How are you gonna take someone who's a loyal Coca-Cola customer and make them a Pepsi follower, right? So that's that's the hard part. A lot of it is too is based on pricing, right? Customers, a lot of customers just care nowadays, and they're price sensitive. 
So I need to take a customer who cares more about the price than, than the quality of the product. They're willing to pay less for something that may last a couple of years versus something that may last five years, but it's double the price. Okay. So buyers have a lot of uh, uh, customers have a lot of influence and power in the market today. So pricing decisions, assortment decisions, real estate and location decisions on where to put businesses are all dictated based on how customers influence the market. The threat of new entrants. This is for any business, but it's not as high for some industries as others, okay? It's gonna be really hard for a new entrant of a soda company to come in and dominate the market. But technology, absolutely. Think about, for example, marketing software or supply chain software. There's a lot of you know startups now who are building softwares to compete to provide the best software solutions for businesses or for consumers as well, right? So depending on your industry, you have to look at the economies of scale. How big is your industry? How many competitors are already out there, all right? Product differentiation. New entrants could come in and be a threat to your company, right? A force to look at if they're doing something really innovative and unique that you're not doing, okay? Um, brand identification is part of that, but switching costs is a big deal too. Perhaps a, a, a startup comes in, a new entrant comes in and, and finds a way to do business a lot cheaper and provides better pricing for customers or business to business customers. Well, that's attractive to some businesses because they want to save money. Everybody wants to save money, right? A company, the individual, the consumer, everybody's trying to find ways to save money and still get the end result of what they're looking for. So that's important. The rest of these are all about innovation, okay? New entrants can come in and be innovative, and that's that's the scary part for some large companies is that they may lose sight on being able to do things quick and innovative because of their company policies and their company structure. Once you get to a certain point and how big you are and the economies of scale that you're in, you may not be able to move as fast as new entrants. So it's very important to always keep in mind that depending on the industry that you're in, new entrants is a driving force. The threat of substitute products. All right. So with the substitute products, what this really means is think about generic versus name brand, right? At the grocery store, there's always the great value brand or the, I think, um, total home brand or whatever that is at Target. Anyway, so what I mean by that is every grocery store chain or every chain of retail stores has either a private label brand or a generic brand that's cheaper for that company to operate with, but can provide the same quality as a name brand. And those name brands actually compete with those on a regular basis, right? But the threat of substitute products is also basically saying in your industry, do you have a lot of competitors that differentiate themselves or offer a, a substitution? The rideshare industry, we're really Uber and Lyft are really the only ones out there besides taxis to worry about. So Uber is probably not that concerned about the threat of substitute products. They really only have Lyft to worry about. But you really need to understand at any given point in time how for how much of a force is that to your competition. So you need to evaluate that and keep on top of what's going on. So after after all those are combined, right? After you look at your your power of your suppliers, after the power of your buyers, after you look at the threat of new entrants and substitute products, it all goes into the mix of being, you know, always in competition with your rivals, right? You're always in competition. Okay? Any one of those forces could be strong, medium, high, or medium, high or low at any given point. You need to assess that, right? That's kind of a tug of war match when you're when you're competing day in and day out, right? It's a constant game if you will, being in business. But you're always making sure you're keeping on top of your competition, okay? You can never just not think you can't look at what your competition's doing. Because at any given point in the game of chess, you wanna have a strategic position to make yourself competitive, be two steps ahead, right? So being aware of your competition is crucial and using the five forces model is a great way to analyze that. So in class, this was an activity we did, but I did have everybody go around and look at the company Pizza Hut and I, and I section the groups out of individuals to be one group, the threat of new entrants, and talk about what are those new entrants against Pizza Hut, if there's any. The bargaining power of consumers or buyers, what, what threats there are of substitute products, and the bargaining power of suppliers, right? And I have to kind of each group talk about the different, you know, a few, two to three, maybe four different dynamics or factors of each. I encourage you to do that, right, as an exercise. Or pick a company of your own that you want to analyze, right? Do a little model on... What is the threat of each of these and what is the driving force behind each one?